This video is sponsored by the new Ready to Roll D&D YouTube show. Hey, so, um... Hmm... Uh, so we did it? We reached over one million dollars on Kickstarter? That's a lot of dollar news! And sold over 1,200 Trask minis? That's a lot of damage! Which we did print out a prototype in, uh... The only mini that can deal damage in real life. So if you still want to go buy a book, along with all the other goodies, head over to the Kickstarter at foolsgold5e.com, because there's less than seven days to go, so get on it! Okay, now we can do the episode. So last episode was a lot! A lot of sips, but I swear we're gonna get to a more balanced format now, because the Fool's Gold group are all kind of going to the same portal. So last time we made some deals, worked on mom issues. Ma'am, this is a Wendigo's kinda fix werewolf daughter. It, it worked, y you did it! And said goodbye. So then after we stole a cart, cause it's therapeutic! Angst, it's always angst that fucks me over. Cause Sips then got eaten by a dino <laughs> and died, kinda. Well, not really, cause instead Zanu saved his ass. As a result, he turned to 60%, losing his left hand to the curse. So now by this point, Sips is like, oh yeah, murder time. This is the part of the campaign I've been looking forward to for years. Things are getting spicy. But right now, Gothi and Jack have their final task of activating the last pedestal. Now they technically can't because Arita has the big old sun crystal in the dragon, but eh, they got a backup, a soul crystal. Should be all right to use. I don't know if this is all right to use, ethically. Eh. The group has been leaning towards chaotic neutral for a while now. Yeah, and we're only using it once. They place the spooky crystal on the pedestal and bam, five down, none to go. They did it, yay! <laughs> uh, but, now what? Uh, right. So after all the pedestals are ready to go, they gotta be activated to create the portal. The big old button to turn it all on is in the center of the map located in a small town called Fool's Crossing. I feel like there's a joke here, but I can't seem to find it. Okay then. Well, how, how have you been feeling since? Finding out I may have a piece of a crystal that once belonged to a genocidal artificial god that may or may not be controlling my every move to open up a portal to an ancient race to potentially wipe them all out? Well, you know when you're so anxious, you eventually come out the other side exceptionally calm? That. So better. Mm-hmm. I just... I want to prove to myself that this is what I want. Maybe the obsession is the crystal, sure. But I'm more than that obsession. I need to finish this. Right. Then let's head out. Now moving a bit forward in another part of the world, we got the king of angst, bad decisions, and emotional intelligence of a rock walking towards the capital city of Kylandria. And you know what? He doesn't have any issues getting there, because the rest of the world is like, you are a lot. Sips then makes his way to the capital's portals, where he just swoops to Alchemist Quarry. Why Alchemist Quarry? Well, remember, he still has some crystal pieces he needs to gather. And there happens to be an NPC that currently has one. <laughs> Can I use your bathroom? Sure. So Sips takes a shower to wash up all the T-Rex goo and blood, then comes out all fresh and in new clothes. Is that my bathrobe? So I need that crystal Arena gave you. Her dead mom's necklace thing. Uh, this? Yep. Yoink. He then takes the crystal and it just fuses into Sips's hand, adding to Zana's crystal and their power. I don't think that's normal. 
Yeah. So, how have you guys been? Mm, pretty good. I died today. That's also not normal. Yeah. But I meant all of you. Oh. Well, I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody in like a month, but eh, chit-chat's not really my priority at the moment. Hey, I did you a favor, so you owe me one. I'm not sure what's up with all of this, but you need to promise me that you'll remember to keep your friends safe, to protect them, okay? Sips grabs her finger and gets in real close. I know. That's the whole goddamn point. Did... Did you get shorter? Okay, I'm leaving. And I'm keeping the bathrobe! Dang. Sips then heads out to his next destination, which he finds out from Zanu is... Fool's Crossing. Feel like there's a joke here? But I can't seem to find it. He catches a cart with some unenthusiastic passengers and makes his way. Back in the sky, Arena is traveling on the dragon with Sneeze, who is on a mission to find Sips again. Arena flies over to Kylandria and finds out they did see him heading to Alchemist Quarry. But he looked like death with blood and guts on him and kind of crazy. Sneeze panics. Well, at least we know he ain't dead. He just looks like death. Let's go! In Alchemist's quarry, they quickly find out from the locals that Sips headed out on a cart northwest. So they go, flying the dragon on maximum overdrive. Sneeze suddenly twinges a bit, then tries to get Arena's attention. Eh. Eh. I'm driving! What? And he points down. On the surface, Sips is just chilling in a cart and then notices a very familiar mech dragon flying overhead. Uh, maybe if I just... Attention, people below! I'm looking for a monkey! Yellow, crocodile arm, face of a jerk! <sighs> Lord, give me strength. You down there? She lands the giant goddamn mech dragon in front of the cart and says, I know he's in there. I got a feeling. Give him up. Which everybody in the cart just went, Wah! and tosses him out. <laughs> well, look who it is, Mr. Jerk abandoning your friend's monkey face. Damn it, I had something better for this. Whoa. You look like death. Ah, uh, yes. I forgot how pleasant you are. Did you get shorter? Arena, what the hell do you want? Well, what he wanted was to see you. He obviously cares about you because he's a true friend. You don't think I care. Oh, please. You left. Abandoning us for what? Angst? I died and ate a human heart. My dad dies! It's not a contest! You started it! <laughs> Arena, I left because I didn't want to kill my friends. And I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings. But I'm not going to apologize for trying not to kill you. And instead, it looks like you're killing yourself. <laughs> Now get in the f***ing car, dragon! Because we're heading out with or without you! <sighs> Reluctantly, Sips gets on along with Sneeze, and they head out on the dragon. So where's Gothi? Oh, I left her a while ago. Are you f***? <laughs> so after a aneurysm or two, Arena and Sips head to Fool's Crossing and land nearby. Which is, of course, noticed by the locals who don't panic, funny enough. The mech dragon has come to be known all across the Bellowing Wilds by now, along with the Fool's Gold team's bullshit. <laughs> so they're mostly met with suspicious looks. Also noticing their landing is Gothi and Jack, 
who also arrive in the town. They then make their way towards the dragon. Arena hops off the dragon and quickly spots Gothi and Jack, who she greets with all her sparkly glory, my eyes, but also giving Gothi a cold shoulder. Hey, Arena, surprised to see you. Yeah, well, somebody's got to keep this group together. I think you're mixing up your timelines. Sips and Sneeze join up with the rest of the group. A little awkward. Hey, Gothi, uh... Gothi steps close to him. And just... Gives him a hug. Hmm? You've... Gotten shorter. Not a goddamn word. Gothi pulls back and now gets a good look at him. You look like death. Fair. I kind of died today. But I mean... I got to snag this bathrobe. Okay. And you're fine. Oh, yeah. And you? I almost died from a wyvern. Huh. And Jawbone almost ate Jack. Huh. My mom's an insane goo dragon. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Cool. What? No, it's not. How is that cool? I don't know. Dragons are cool. Well, not this one. I'm not a mind reader, Arena. Reunited at last. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you could with all your protagonist powers. I missed this. Oh, go to hell. Uh, guys, I think I found it. What? what? Jack explains to the group that he found the big old button to open the portal. According to his old maps and research, it's located in a bakery owned by a little lady who makes little pies and cookies. A.K.A. Grand's Bakery. So our dumbass group comes in there trying to explain things like, uh, crystals, foreclaimers, uh, portals, genocide. Do you think we could take a look at your basement? Giant rat exterminators. With a successful bluff, we managed to access the bakery's basement. How did you do that? Hmm. I speak old lady. They make their way down till eventually the group reaches a part of the basement that seems not so bakery. As they spot a slightly glowing panel made out of stone jutting out from the wall with four claimer markings all over it. Examining the panel and translating the inscription, we start to understand that this is not going to be so easy. Because we realize that in order to open the massive portal, it's going to destroy the entire town. And anything in a five mile radius. Yeah. Woof. Hmm. Oh yeah, I think we're leaning towards chaotic evil now. Hell yeah, full genocide run, let's go! This video is sponsored by the new Ready to Roll D&D YouTube show. I know, I know, there's like a million D&D live YouTube shows, but just, this is the good shit. <laughs> Ready to Roll Season 1 is 27 episodes of six adventurers playing D&D set in the homebrew world of Altero. Now, I could talk about how they got a, some exciting adventure, like going on a secret mission to find the magical and mysterious escape prisoner, the Green Mother. And that's all good. But what I really like about these guys, other than being funny, quirky people, is that they're cinematic as fuck. <coughs> is that your mom's basement D&D? This is movie quality. Handcrafted costumes to reenact cool scenes. They got props and look at the mini skills. They got fog. What? They got a custom built dungeon set with like wood and paint and chairs and sh- It's beautiful. So if you want to watch a bunch of passionate Canadian nerds dive into an epic D&D adventure, subscribe to their channel at a filthy quest line and check them out. Link in the description down below.